welcome once again Philip Clock fans. Here we are at another raw video. This minimal processing and just uh, me working on clocks. Not being too fancy hopefully. So what we've got here is from a previous video. We're working on three Copal 225s. This is just for reference. Uh, you'll see why in a minute. I've got that there. This is a clock. It's a Japanese clock. Runs on 100 volts and 50 hertz is what it's rated for. I've actually got this plugged into my wall current, which is 60 hertz, running at about 120 volts. Now there's concern there because you think, well, this is 100 volts. What's that going to do? This is not sensitive equipment. It's possible that bulb's overpowered a little bit, but it doesn't even look like it. Motor may be overpowered somewhat for the windings, but I'm even wondering about that now. If that motor is any different from any of the other motor windings, uh, I don't know. But I, I do know that it's operating fine. Now, how is that possible? Because as, as I said, it's uh, 100 volts rated for 50 hertz. It needs 50 hertz to keep time. As you may know, the clocks these clocks use the uh, frequency of the alternating current, how fast it bounces back and forth every second to keep time. So this shouldn't be working correctly. It shouldn't be matching this clock over here, which it is. Really cool thing I found on this motor here is there's actually a switch. Let's touch the handle. There. See these those two are this one and my reference clock are running uh, pretty much the same speed. Of course, when you have flip clocks, to get them all to go off, see we've got three clocks here. This is the OK clock that's supposedly a parts clock, but right now it's not doing anything. The only thing I've done so far is lubricate the motor a little bit, clean it up a little bit. Let's see if you can see this right here. You see that, that switch right there? That is actually a switch right here. And if you can see that, it says 50. So when I opened it up, it was set over here. Over here it says 60. So this this is whatever you're running. And if you remember from a previous video, you may already know this. In Japan, they run at 100 volts everywhere. But some parts of the country run at 50 hertz, some at 60. So even though it was rated on the bottom of the clock that said 50, it, the manufacturer could have just flipped the switch and said, okay, now this is for 60. Or a person who lived in a place where they ran 60 hertz could open it up and flip it themselves if they were so inclined. Um, the question might be, well, why does Japan do that? It actually comes down to the generators uh, from way back in after World War II when they were rebuilding. They got some of their generators from one place, another generator from another place. They were running on different hertz. To replace generators in an electric grid is a big deal, so they just left it. Okay, we got 50 hertz here, 100 hertz here. Uh, excuse me, 50 hertz here, 60 hertz there. Uh, they left it that way kind of strange anyway so what we've got is a clock here that is running on 120 rated for 100 and we're having no problem at all what is going to be the long-term effects I keep feeling it to see if it's running hot it's it's warm but they all run that way uh, this is the 220 volt clock I I noticed and I've got a converter to convert to 220 and it was running pretty warm too just might be the the nature of it this isn't hot to the touch it's been running for a little while now and as you see it's keeping good time so that's kind of where i'm at with this I've, i'm going to talk to the the owner of this clock what i would recommend is just going with it okay so what's the worst that could happen well, i could burn your house down i guess besides that no it could fail this thing is if it fails it's fail it fails it's the winding's going to fail um, the connection between the current and the winding will melt out uh, these things aren't going to blow up. They're not going to catch on fire. It's it's. I cannot see. It. There's nothing. There's just a coil. So uh, I've heard of people overpowering certain devices, and again, they'll say, "Okay, that's fine. You can run a whatever hair dryer, whatever you want. You're just shortening its life." Who knows? This thing's going to last another twenty years. So I would recommend staying with with this. And then, if it does go out you'd get another motor it's plain and simple we could switch over to this motor i was having problems earlier i filmed this but boy that previous video got really long 
I was having problems with that. So I thought, well, I'll go back to my old standby of, of cleaning the clock motor with alcohol like I used to. And I did I did that. Oiled it. It's making noises. It it just wasn't working good. I said, the heck with this. So I went back to WD forty, one squirt, and that that cleaned that out. It just cleaned it out right away. I would sp spin that motor and it would not stop spinning. It would just spin like crazy. So uh, I'm sorry, but I'm a big fan of the WD-40. I'll do WD-40, and then, so I would spin that motor here, over here, and it wouldn't stop spinning. So this one here, I've cleaned a little bit. Let's see if I can demonstrate that on this clock. This is, so we're going to put a little WD-40 in here. Okay. you notice I mean it's it's been a better I, I've already tried to clean that once and the WD-40 is getting in there and I don't know if it's really gunked up now it's spinning really good I'm gonna hit it one more time it doesn't want to stop now so so again what I'll do is I'll run this so I think this is acting as a really good solvent and I hear all kind of things it attracts dirt oh it'll dry out well let it dry out because I'm going to follow this with um, oil. Listen, that stuff works. So uh, use WD-40. Uh, I might take some compressor, blow that out, or something to get the extra oil out. I don't really think it's a big deal. Then we'll uh, put a drop of clock oil or synthetic motor oil. A lot of people who do clocks will use a synthetic motor oil. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. So here we go. We got this clock running on 120 volts and it's running fine. No problems. The bulb's doing okay. Uh, I don't see any reason to replace that. If that bulb's being overpowered, again, what are you doing? You're shortening its lifespan. It's not a hazard. This is not going to cause an electrical hazard. Well, there we are. That's kind of where we're at right now. The other thing that's going on is the clock cases for these two here, for these two here, are being whitened. They are in here. My potato salad bowl. They, they are coated with hydrogen peroxide. Actually, volume forty uh, developer that you would use to dye your hair. Uh, to stop that from drying out, one of our more astute video watchers said that some people get marbling when they do that. Uh, you see I've got plastic under this lid. Marbling, what I mean is it, it'll, it'll try to whiten it, but then it, it leaves streaks and stuff. Uh, I don't get that usually because I, I make sure that this is sealed really, really good. And I have a a little bowl of water in here. I'm breaking my own rules now. I'm not using gloves. I have a little bowl of water inside here. That's going to keep it moist. I also uh, will come back in here, check it, make sure that it's make sure that it's staying um, coated. So I, I just go through and make sure it's the, the coating's equal on this and that we're getting whitening. Now this is that, this is the one that goes with the red clock. We talked about it being a Toshiba. Now, you, I think it's already starting to work. Now, in my previous video, the previous video, we had some problems because the lighting or the camera had, it, it had a yellowish hue to it. So I don't think you can get a fair comparison of what it used to be like. But anyway, that's kind of what's going on here. I'm just letting that soak Keep my eye on it, make sure it stays moist, keep it covered real good. We're gonna let that work probably 48, 72 hours, however long it takes. The owner is making a trip, he's leaving the country. He said, take your time and get it done right. And that's what I intend to do. So we'll see, we got this going good. 
So I'm real happy with that. That's, you're not supposed to do that. You see, that's going to work on my skin. So I'm, I'm setting a bad example. It, it stings a little bit. <laughs> i got to get this washed off. Keep it away from my eyes. That stuff flips up and gets you in your eyes. It could damage you. Uh, if you get that stuff, volume 40 uh, developer, it is dangerous. So don't mess around. I'm being a bad example. Uh, I need to go wash my hands now. So anyway, it binds. It, <laughs> it really does. i got to go. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll just see how this this all turns out. We'll see if I can talk the owner into going with this. I really think he should... Uh, and I'm just just keep everything original. Go with that, and uh, either put it back into the original case, or uh, see if I'll. This is look how nice this case is, and it's just a parts clock. Uh, see if he'll let me take that logo off, the OK logo. I don't want to touch it with. And you know what that OK is? If you haven't Googled it, does that mean it's an OK clock? No, OK used to be a. Uh, brand it was uh was it chevy chevrolet uh they would sell used cars and it was a big deal from the 20s up to the 60s and obviously up into the early 70s because they had the clock uh, i don't think it's around anymore but uh, that was their it was a brand it was a, a it was a chevrolet brand of used cars now they'd sell fords and everything else because uh, they were getting those as trade-ins there's a lot of marketing uh, magazine and, uh, articles and stuff like that. So we've got a clock here. So if someone's into okay uh, used cars, that might be of interest to them. Uh, if so, please tell me quickly because I'm going to take that off there. If I get his permission, I'm going to show you how to get one off like that. I had a clock that that is actually a 225. It's up. It's right up there on my shelf. That uh, it's just a 225 convention here. But I had to take, I took off a uh, drug company label on there. You know, there's a secret how to get this screen printed or whatever painted on. It's paint. How to get that off. Uh, use something like acetone or a goof off or something like that. You will melt this clock. There's a way to get that off. And we'll show you that. Or at least talk about it later in, a, in an upcoming video. Well, hope this was at least interesting to somebody. Uh, Leave a comment if you have a comment about me overpowering this clock. Uh, you can Google it. And like I said, you'll hear you'll hear different uh, opinions, but mostly they say hey, it's, it's not going to damage it. But if you find something else that you uh, like to add, please let me know. And while we're talking about that, if if it doesn't hurt your feelings, uh, give me a thumbs up. That just uh, encourages me, keeps me going. The the could eventually someday help the channel. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Uh, it, I would appreciate it, but even especially the comments, uh, good or bad, uh, just to, uh, encourage me that it's helping. These videos are helping somebody, or at least at some uh, some little interest to somebody. Uh, thanks for taking the time watching. We'll see you again.